Hello Internet, I heard you like the DL650. Last winter I bought one for a bargain with only 15,000 kilometers on it. It's a bit rusty on the frame and I already took it apart quite a lot, although it doesn't take a lot of time. Can you see who produced this motorbike? Can you guess? I heard about the DL650's brace reliability and also its dual spotting qualities and I thought I should put that to the test. In this video I want to show you how I do my first general rebuild and what I'm going to modify on the bike because as most of you say only then it will truly come alive. I also really appreciate the mechanical simplicity of the engine. It's one cylinder, one carburetor and it's oil cooled. This is my small workshop. It's quite roomy, right? I took the Diaz carburetor screws smoothly off with a pipe wrench and I'm going to replace them with M5 A4 Allen screws that are 40mm long. A very useful guide to the BSD40 carb can be found on addrider.com, the BSD40 bible. I will post a link below. I removed the rust film with citric acid, it's 100mg in 1 liter of water, and cleaned it in an ultrasonic bath. Having all the parts lying around, I will also do a cheap rechatting as suggested in the Adventure OC channel. Instead of a 150 main jet, I first tried a 147.5 because I'm also riding at higher sea levels in the Alps and in the Carpathian Mountains for example. You will find further videos of such travels on our channel. Also I adjusted the float height. I grinded a new needle with a power drill and this nicely colored grinding head that's 25mm long. Also I drilled the slide for faster throttle response and shortened the new spring I bought. To round it all up, I replaced most of the o-rings. What you can see here are small scratches on the carb slide. This happens when you ride without a carb breather filter. I also cut a 51mm hole in the air box and replaced the air filter with the twin air Achermann's one. So as you can see I'm using the Motion Pro 3. It's quite a handy kit. It packs together in this small pack. I'm grinding the header pipe and I'm going to replace the exhaust gasket. I'm using the mid pipe by Sabring, a banded Mania adapter and a GSXR K1 K2 exhaust. Also, I thought it was a good idea to wrap the exhaust pipe, so if I go off-road I don't burn myself, and I appreciate how it covers up the nasty discolored rusty bits. I added a different kind of foam on top of the saddle and refreshed the cover as the old one was starting to fall apart. For the aesthetics, because I newly owned this bike, I tried to smooth out the scratches in the plastics with a blade and various grids of sandpaper reaching up to 2000. I also refurbished tiny bits, such as the fuel hose, so that mud can block the front sprocket and to simplify sprocket inspection I opened the sprocket cover. Because the old fuel lines were literally rotting away, I had to fit new ones. Those are neoprene covered for longer wear and instead of the tiny filter in the carburetor inlet, I fitted a decent fuel filter right here, where it's more or less shady. I ended up having a needle that's pretty similar to the DJ kit needle, but I added two shims. I ended up having a 175 Mikuni main jet because the bike would only pick up throttle with a bigger main. Having the frame all naked, I treated the rusty bits with rust converter. It should at least slow down the frame's decay. I decided to adjust the valves, as it's so easy with just two valves and two lock nuts. Unfortunately, I had lots of problems with overly tight screws and caps. I used this handy technique and it worked perfectly. Finally, I was able to turn over the engine and position it at the top dead center. I took the old oil out and opened the left engine case. I wasn't able to remove the clutch basket, so I hammered loose the old neutral sending unit screws that are known to fall out in some engines. I made this tool and replaced, as well as Loctite, the NSU down with new Allen screws. I painted the oil cooler guard as well as the oil cooler and replaced the lower oil pipe because it was damaged too much by the rust. I also fitted one of those magnetic oil drain plugs and replaced the spark plugs with decent ones that should at least last for the next 40,000 kilometers. Now I took care of the brakes and the wheels. 
I had to replace the disc in the front and rear. I had some screw issues here as well. Using the same technique as with the alternator inspection cap, I was able to remove it. I also installed a different chain wheel with 43 sprockets and of course new brake pads. I also had to fit new rear hub absorbers. Then I cleaned and oiled the chain and installed the highly recommended seal retainer. I switched to dual sport tires. I've never tried those specific ones. I will have to report back to you. I replaced the handlebar with a decent one that should not bend easily and also positions the handles higher than stock. As grips I chose Oxford Adventure heating grips that are directly connected to the battery. In order to find some space in the cockpit, I fabricated my own aluminium mount to use my phone for navigation and find some space for a power socket. I improvised my own case savers and built my own license plate bracket from aluminium. I also fitted one of those Cree H4 light bulbs. I'll have to report back on them. And finally I modded the suspension. On the rear I fitted a new custom-made Wilbur's shock, a company I had good experience with. It has a rebound adjustment clicker. On the front I first got rid of the old oil and made this socket with a 30mm nut. Then I was able to replace the fork seals. I decided to fit new stiffer progressive springs and um, as a 10 fork oil. Let's see how they hold up. Well, thanks for watching. I honestly would not have been able to do all this without the help from the great internets. You'll find more videos of this bike in use on our channel, so hit the subscribe button and tick send me notifications for this channel if you want to get further updates. Have a nice day. Max is out.